Okay, uh, this video is going to look at activating uh, selective packages. Uh, so this is a little bit more complicated than just turning on something like an aggregator database, like Academic Search Complete, where all the journal titles, uh, we have no control over what shows up in that database. Um, we just either turn it on or turn it off. Um, with a selective package, um, that is mostly going to apply to our ebook collections. Um, for example, the Gale Virtual Reference Library, that's a, that's a database that a few of us subscribe to. There's probably uh, 100,000 titles in that database, and those are all ebooks, reference books, uh, but you select which ones you want to purchase. So with Gale Virtual Reference Library, for example, uh, here at Madisonville, we have a couple hundred titles in that database that we've purchased. Uh, so you can't really turn on the entire collection because it would turn on the 100,000 titles, um, of which we only own about 200 of. So um, when getting into the e-book collections, that's usually going to be the case. Um, it depends if you subscribe to something like uh, a community college collection. I know EBSCO and ProQuest have such a thing. Uh, you might be able to just activate everything in that because we don't really have a say as to what um, is uh, available in those collections. We just subscribe to them. Uh, with the Net Library eBooks, um, that's going to be uh, something that we would have to turn on just parts of just uh, certain portfolios for. So um, for this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, at least turn on um, some portfolios in uh, a selective package. And I might have to redo this video um, as we learn more about how to do that. But I am going to focus on the Gale Virtual Reference Library for this demonstration. So again, going to my spreadsheet, uh, Gale Virtual Reference Library is a selective package database. So I already explained that. It's an ebook collection. We only, each college just picks what they want out of the, that collection. Uh, many of us have titles in that collection by the looks of it. I'm just scrolling across the spreadsheet. So this is something that um, we're going to have to turn on. I'll turn it on right now for Madisonville. I'll just do ours and then um, we'll, we'll have to find out how to proceed with activating uh, different instances of this collection because um, I will be turning on the portfolios for Madisonville, but we do not own the same titles that Ashland owns or Big Sandy owns or Bluegrass owns. So uh, we might have to activate more than one uh, activation of this collection. I'm not sure quite yet how we would go about doing that. Um, so let us go back into Alma. And I'm just going to do an electronic collection search for uh, Gale Virtual Reference Library. And this should not be active in our institution zone at this point. Uh, we should be in the community zone. Nobody's turned this thing on yet. If we activate it, it will bring up the activation wizard. And this is similar to the activation wizard for an aggregate package. Now again, this is a selective package. You can see it says so right there. So we don't want to turn on every single portfolio in this collection. Um, I'm going to activate this electronic collection service. I'm not going to make it available and I'm not going to automatically activate new portfolios uh, because, again, this is selective. We will have to, if Madisonville bought more titles in this collection, I would have to go in here and activate the portfolios manually for the new titles that we're buying. Click Next. Again, do not enable a proxy server on the linking page uh, because, again, that would just set that proxy server for everybody and we don't want to do that. Okay, now an activation type with a selective package. If I activate everything, it's going to activate 100,000 ebook titles, and I only own about 200 of those titles. The way to do this is to activate the electronic collection and selected portfolios via an Excel file upload. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is going to upload an Excel spreadsheet that contains the ISBN numbers uh, of the books in my collection. Okay, click Next asking me to upload a file. 
Now there's a template file that um, Alma provides. So I'm going to go up to help and I'm just going to go ahead and we'll just cancel this. Just cancel the activation and we'll go and get the file first because again there's a template that they want you to use uh, an Excel spreadsheet template. So I'll go up to help, browse online help and I have to find the file. I think I want to go into uh, portfolio activation something like that. We'll see what we find here. The, here it is right here, the bulk portfolio information file. So what we're doing is we're uploading our files in bulk. So on this there's the spreadsheet here. This is the template file that they want you to use. So you have to download this to your computer. Go ahead and open that up. Nothing's in here except these headings. Uh, just this heading up here Really what you need to put in is the ISBN number, so I'm just going to save this file as, and I'll just save it to my, uh, let me save it to my documents, and I'll just call it template. Okay, so now I need to get the ISBN numbers for my collection out of Gale. So I'm going to go to my library, just open a new tab here. Go to Madisonville, go to library, and I'm going to go into my Gale Virtual Reference Library. And then from Gale Virtual Reference, you can see all these nice little uh, thumbnails show up for the books. I'm going to go to more and then get my title list. Now this is my title list. We subscribe to several hundred. We have a pretty extensive list here, and what I want to do is get this as an Excel file, so export to Excel. And there's a way to get this for your EBSCO and your ProQuest titles as well. Of course, um, uh, I'll probably be showing instructions on how to do that at a later time, but those, of course, those uh, collections are huge. Uh, most of us have like tens of thousand ebooks in in the net library collection, so I wanted to start with a more manageable sized collection to start with. Okay, so th this spreadsheet gives you the titles and ISBNs of all of our Gale books. We have 153 of them, so I'm just going to copy that entire list of ISBNs. Just copy that. And then I'm going to go back to that template file that I had. Uh, I'm going to go to my documents, documents, and I just named it template. Uh, where's template? Here's template. Okay, now I want to put it in the ISBN column. Looks like there's several different columns here for ISBN, so I'm just going to put it under the first one. Uh, let me go back to that, copy it paste it into this template. We'll save the template. Okay, so this should have saved with all of my ISBN numbers in there. And close out of Excel and go back into Alma. So now I should have that Excel file in the correct template. So now I'm going to activate this again. Uh, again, I want to activate it, but not make it available and not automatically activate the new portfolios. Make sure our proxy is not enabled on the linking screen. And then I'm going to activate the electronic collection by an Excel file upload. And here it's asking now for this file. So I'm going to go into my documents and get that template. I saved it as template and I'm going to validate it online and it's going to tell me it says multiple MMS records were found for one record so that's not bad it might not get every single book remember I had a 153 
Looks like it's going to get 136 of these out of the 152. I guess one of them was maybe not formatted correctly or something. So it's going to get most of my collection. Go ahead and activate. And then I would have to go in manually and activate the ones it didn't wasn't able to. Now it says I can download this Excel file. I should have done that, but I, I didn't catch it in time. But you can download the Excel file and it'll tell you which ones uh, did not correctly um, did not correctly upload. So when you do go to activate it, it does have to run as a job, just as just like when you activate an aggregate package. Of course, it shouldn't take too long with this job. It was just 136 portfolios, so you're looking at maybe a one to two minute um, time for it to run. Um, so the job did run, so I'm going to go to my institution zone now. That's where Gale Cengage Virtual Reference Library is now located, and you'll notice the portfolio list is 136 um, titles. So these are all of our titles, well not all of our titles, it only was able to activate 136 out of 152. Um, so I'm going to go back, and then you can go to your edit service to turn this thing on in Primo. Uh, again, I'll do my group settings first. I'm going to add Madisonville, proxy for Madisonville, and then the Gale ID. For this one, it just asks for the local ID. So for us, with our Gale collection, we actually have, uh, let's see if it's on here. Um, for our Gale collection, we have a separate uh, ID. It's not on the spreadsheet but I do know what it is, so I'm going to type that in. Um, normally it would be our KCTCS MCTC, but for our Gale products that we subscribe to locally, it is uh, MADI17239. Okay, so that should save it so that this is activated in Primo for Madisonville. I'm going to go to activate it, make it available, and that will push it out to Primo. Now it should only send it to Madisonville's Primo. Um, might take a few hours for that to uh, correct itself. Okay, so let's actually uh, test a title out in Primo and see if it's working. So I'm going to type in a title that I know, Human uh, Diseases and conditions and we'll see what comes up uh, so a couple different books come up uh, this first one is the 2017 edition of that book when I click on uh, available online what comes up is Gale Cengage virtual reference library and that should take me into Gale virtual reference library and here I am at the book okay um, so that's what it would look like if you activated your ebooks through uh, the activation wizard through the databases uh, the way that I showed you. Now I'm going to show you something that was done uh, prior to when we got Alma, and that's um, how books were activated in SFX and through Voyager before we had Alma. A lot of our ebooks were activated. Um, differently. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. Uh, if I go on to the second book on this list, and this is a book that some of some of us have in our library collection, our, our print library co collection, and when you bring up available online, okay, so it's at Bluegrass and Hopkinsville in their actual libraries, but the, the one that's uh, available to view online is uh, it's also a Gale Virtual Reference Library book, but this was activated um, as a standalone portfolio. Now, why is this a problem? It's a problem because uh, this should not be showing up. Nothing on this page is Madisonville's. It's not in our book collection, our print collection, and uh, it's only for Big Sandy online through this link. So. Uh, if I go back into Alma, I'm actually going to look up this book in Alma and see what comes up. So if I go back into Alma, and I'm going to do an all title search, 
human diseases and conditions. These are all the different uh, bibs that are currently um, up and running in Alma for this book, and there's several. So the first one is uh, a physical book with no electronic um, titles attached to it in any way. It's just the Ashland and Jefferson. So those should show up in Ashland and Jefferson's Primos as a print book. Uh, the second one is an electronic portfolio that's activated for Madisonville. At least I think it's Madison. Well, let me check the portfolio. Yeah, that one's set for Madisonville because I go in the group settings. So this is one that I just set up through the database. And then the four, I'll skip the third one, but the fourth one is the same thing. Uh, this, this should be another one of Madisonville's. We actually have this human diseases and conditions in two editions. But if I actually look at the portfolio and then go to the group settings, I'm seeing again that it's inherited from the service, but it's only Madisonville that, that receives that link. Okay. So those are our two Gale Virtual Reference books that I just set up through the database activation, number two and number three. And again, those are only going to send to Madisonville. Number three on the list is just another one where we have it in the libraries, a print library. And then the fifth one's the one that I showed you over here in Primo where it's showing up for Bluegrass and Hopkinsville's print libraries and Big Sandy's e-library. Okay, so that'd be number five on the list. And you can take a look at the physical holdings here. Again, we're seeing Bluegrass and Hopkinsville. And then we're seeing the one for Big Sandy. When I go to look at this portfolio, this wasn't set up through the database. This was set up before we had Alma. And you can see that right here on the first page is that it's showing Big Sandy. Uh, it's made available for everybody. That's why it's showing up in my Madisonville Primo. But it's just for Big Sandy. If you go to the linking page, remember I've, I've said many, many times we don't want to uh, set anything up universal on this linking page. No, the proxy server isn't enabled, but we have the link right here. And you can see Big Sandy's sitting right here in the name. So this is the URL that's going to get sent to everybody's Primo. So this link right here for Madisonville, this is not going to work for us because this has actually got Big Sandy's proxy information right sitting right in it. It's going to work just fine for Big Sandy, but for the other 15 colleges in the system office, that's not going to work. Uh, if you go to group settings, uh, for some reason it's showing that it's going through Madisonville, and that's probably because I've activated uh, the collection, the, G the GVRL collection for Madisonville. Um, Nothing about Big Sandy on this screen, though. Everything about Big Sandy is over here in these two screens that affect everybody. So that's why um, all of these books, not just Big Sandy's Gale Virtual Reference Library books, but uh, for the Net Library books that were set up um, by Paul Fuller and some of the eBrary stuff even and actually I know a lot of a lot of colleges have stopped subscribing to eBrary and other database collections that they used to have a few years ago but nothing's been done to deactivate any of that stuff in Alma so um, that's why when you do a search for a book and I'm just gonna type in dogs now it's just kinda one of my go-to search terms you're going to find books on this list. Let me just make sure it's a book search. So I'm going to do an advanced search, change it to books, and hit search. That's why when you search for books in Primo, you're going to be finding uh, old portfolios or bibs. I'm not sure what the difference is in this case that have been activated as standalone portfolios. So for this book here, Dogs Laboratory Animal Management. Uh, Bluegrass got this through eBrary. Madisonville, 
uh, at the time we do now, but at the time we didn't subscribe to eBrary. And all of these uh, colleges who got it through EBSCO, they probably were getting it through one of the EBSCO community college or academic collections. Madisonville uh, does not have access to that. So Madisonville doesn't show up anywhere on this page. So when our students go and search for books about dogs, they're getting all kinds of ebooks uh, with these links, and none of them are for Madisonville. So this kind of uh, kind of raises the a discussion point for what to do with the ebooks. Um, at this point, we're going to have to uh, make some decisions about how we want to activate our ebooks if we want to simply activate them through the databases like I originally did with the Gale Virtual Reference uh, collection and basically eliminate all of these old activations um, where it was actually a standalone uh, portfolio that had been activated with with universal settings set up for those portfolios instead of the group settings which we need to be using uh, moving forward. So that's kind of a just a little bit of a look on how to activate ebooks um, and the ebook collections. And at this point, we're going to have to make some decisions on how to proceed moving forward.